Hey, this video is brought to you today by my friends at Element. Element is a tasty electrolyte mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. That means lots of salt and no sugar. Element was formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfectly suited to folks following keto, low carb, or paleo diets. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium per packet. The perfect ratio I have found for me. What I love the most is that there's no junk, no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no fillers, no BS. As a member of our community, Element has a very special offer for you. You can claim your free Element sample pack simply by going over to the website, drinkelement.com forward slash Marcus Philly to get yours. Can you even tell I'm doing a peck pop? Pop, 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 pop. Are you ready for a chest explosion? Everyone loves a good chest pump, and if you don't, then I'm not sure I can trust you. But for real, chest was the very first body part I trained when I was a kid and I went to the gym. And while hitting 10 different chest machines for three sets each was my go-to back then, the same old sets on traditional machines can get a little boring and stale. That's a big part of the look good, move well philosophy of training. If we're going to train to look good and move well for life, then we better find ways to keep effective training interesting. Let me repeat that. Find better ways to keep effective training interesting. There's a lot of ways that people are out there exercising that look interesting, but is it effective training? That is what we're searching for with functional bodybuilding. I used to train chest hard every week until I turned about 23 years old and I started my CrossFit journey. Bench press and chest development was not exactly the focus for the next seven years of my competitive life. Instead, we focused on max lifts like the squat, deadlift, overhead press, as well as the Olympic lifts, the snatch, and the clean and jerk. What I found interesting was that I would get more questions about my chest development during my CrossFit years than I ever got when I was doing traditional bodybuilding. So it got me thinking, Maybe there was something to the way that we trained in CrossFit that was actually helping my chest development more than I had realized. Upon closer examination, a couple things have cemented in my brain about building a decent chest with functional exercises and training formats. I use these often in my functional bodybuilding training programs like Pump and Perform. These are two separate training tracks within Persist. Since these have always helped me to maintain and build a decent chest, stay functional and healthy in my shoulders, and incorporate some of the conditioning and athleticism that I love all into my training. So what are those key movements and leverage points that we're gonna be using in today's workout? The first thing we're gonna leverage is aerobic push and pull chest development. What is that? Well, we're gonna be performing a workout today that has a lot of upper body pushing in it, but we're going to be slightly aerobically fatigued. We're gonna thoughtfully pair an exercise like the rowing machine with upper body pushing exercises. What that does is it's going to fatigue some of the stabilizer muscles that we use for pushing. When you row a bunch, we get our upper back more fatigued, and when we go to push, those muscles don't do as good as stabilizing for bench press or dips. As a result, the pushing muscles in the pushing segments of this training format are going to have to work that much harder. The second key leverage point or movement that we're gonna use is dips. I believe dips are king. These train your shoulders to such a big range of motion and therefore chest muscles get stretched massively. The countless muscle ups and ring dips that we did and I did in CrossFit were some of the only chest development exercises I did for years and they were very effective. The last lesson from my CrossFit years are that burpees are powerful. This is like the ultimate plyometric push-up. 
I see people doing crazy stuff on the internet all the time. The Superman push-up, the clap behind the back push-up. Well, with a burpee, what you can do is you can throw your entire body weight from a standing position onto the floor with a lot of speed. And essentially, what you get is a massive eccentric or negative contraction on the chest when you catch yourself. Follow that up with an explosive push-up so that you can jump back onto your feet and burpees are the ultimate plyo push-up. So forget Superman push-ups, do more burpees fast. Okay, I'm gonna bring some of these together in the following functional muscle training format. We're here in part four, and this is yet another 30-minute session start to finish. If you haven't caught the other three parts of this four-part series, then be sure to head down to the link in the description below and go give them a watch once you've finished with this. I've covered legs, I've covered glutes, and I've covered back. And finally, we have arrived at chest. And as those of you know who are followers of this channel, I actually don't think too much about specific muscle groups when I train and when I write workouts. Instead, I like to think a lot more about movement patterns. So to train chest, we have to push with the upper body, mostly in the horizontal plane, but you'll see some adjustments and some variations to this too. What pushing in the horizontal plane does is it demands abduction of the humerus. That's just geek speak for flexing your pecs. The following training format that I'm going to outline for you now is going to combine a push-push superset using something heavy that is controlled and something body weight that is fast. Immediately after we get some higher threshold contractions of the chest and pump the heck out of it, we're going to move into another of my favorite training formats called aerobic bodybuilding. And this is when we perform sustainable aerobic work with simple bodybuilding contractions. So you'll be doing cardio and bodybuilding together and we call it aerobic bodybuilding. Going back to my CrossFit sport experience, I found that when we perform moderate to high rep muscle contractions, under some aerobic fatigue, I would always get this massive pump in the local muscles. And in comparison, this was much more so than if I had just done the bodybuilding movements alone. Now, to do this under aerobic fatigue, I would have to sacrifice some of the weight that I was using and go a bit lighter. But I could manage to get great local muscle stimulus with this combination. Back then, training for CrossFit, that really wasn't my focus, but later on, when I wanted to develop a variety of training formats that combine great work capacity as well as range of motion and build muscle, this was always a format that I liked and I wanted to come back to. So without further ado, let me walk you through the training format and what it looked like today. We started out with what I'll call the athletic muscle chest superset, slow meets fast. I perform four supersets of the following. Begin with a wide grip barbell bench press. This was performed at a very slow cadence, four second controlled negative, a one second pause, and then an explosive lift back up for six reps. I took a 15 second short rest after the bench press and I dropped and gave it 12 burpees as fast as I could. At the end of the burpees, you get a two minute recovery period before you go back and repeat the first exercise, the bench press. So it's bench press, burpees, long rest. Bench press, burpees, long rest for four sets. Each set got progressively harder and faster and I was complete with four sets in roughly 12 minutes. Following that push-push superset, we move into an aerobic bodybuilding workout. We're gonna be using the rowing machine. We're also gonna need a set of dumbbells and an incline bench and a dip bar, three pieces of equipment. This workout gets started, you begin the clock. You're gonna start by rowing for 20 calories for men and 16 calories for women. After you complete those calories on the rowing machine, pick up two moderate to light dumbbells, get onto an incline bench and start to perform alternating dumbbell chest presses. Once you've performed 10 on each arm or 20 total reps, put the dumbbells down, get back on the rowing machine and repeat the same circuit for three more rounds. 
Once you've totaled four rounds of rowing and dumbbell bench, you are now going to move on to rowing and bar dips. The same number of row calories followed by 10 to 15 bar dips. This will be, again, four rounds for a total of eight rounds on the rowing machine, four of them using dumbbell chest press and four of them using the dip bar. The total duration of this aerobic bodybuilding workout was roughly 15 to 16 minutes. Combine that with the beginning superset that took 12 minutes and like I said, you have yourself approximately 30 minutes of work start to finish. Now let me break down some of the choices and how we structured this workout and why it meets the functional bodybuilding philosophy of looking good and moving well. The first point is wide grip and narrow grip. One thing that we believe in a lot at functional bodybuilding is that we should vary our hand and foot position when we approach training of a specific movement pattern. By taking your hands out wide, by bringing them in narrow, as we did on the wide grip bench press and the burpee, we're gonna get this impact of training different areas of a muscle. You can place greater stress on different muscle heads. A wide grip bench versus a narrow grip burpee might impact whether you get more chest development, tricep, or shoulder impact. All in all, what we're getting is we're spreading the workload over a broader area of the muscle, and we're making sure that we're training angles that might otherwise not get touched if we always keep our hands and our feet in the same position on movements. Another principle, slow followed by fast. In the first superset, we used lots of time under tension in the bench press. Slow controlled movements are very valuable for building great motor control. If we move slowly, we can protect our joints, we can actually improve the strength and the health of tendons and ligaments in the soft tissue, and longer time under tension like this can lead to more muscle breakdown, which in turn can lead to more development of the muscle when you recover and repair. And our muscles are designed to move slow and to move fast. And by incorporating safe, fast exercises, like the burpee in my example, we can keep the muscle tissue fast, train quick twitch muscles, and keep some athleticism inside of our training so that we don't become somebody that always moves slowly and doesn't have the ability to adapt to quick situations or fast movements in life. Another key concept that was included in here was unilateral training. We included an alternating dumbbell bench press in order to make sure that you were training one side of your body at a time. I love using alternating movement patterns like this because what it does is it forces your brain to start working in new ways, controlling one side in an isometric while the other side is moving down and up. This requires a little bit of brain and skill while it also helps us to train one side of the body at a time, helping us ensure that we are correcting for any imbalances in strength that we have from right to left. I've mentioned this in past episodes of this functional muscle series, but we all have underlying strength imbalances. And until you start training unilaterally, you won't know what's underlying. You won't know where your opportunity for injury is going to present itself. And in this format, when you actually include unilateral exercises, you can help ensure and give yourself an insurance policy against some of these unilateral deficits that may lead to injury and strength plateaus over time. In constructing workouts and training formats, I also like to think about movement selection that makes sure that we hit the joints of the body from different angles. I already talked about wide versus narrow, but what about incline versus decline? We used an incline bench press, which gets our shoulder working in one plane, and then followed that up in the aerobic bodybuilding format with a dip, which gets our shoulder working in yet another plane. If you never train the joint in a specific range of motion, it will become very weak and it will be very susceptible to injury. Therefore, when we look at training approaches and formats in functional bodybuilding, we like to include a wide variety of angles and positions, both wide and narrow, to ensure that we're not leaving any stone unturned, so to speak. A functional muscle training format would not be complete if we only focused on external load. 
one of the big elements that we like to address is making sure that we utilize body weight resistance training as well. Being capable of moving your body weight under control and then using body weight exercises to a very full range of motion is a very effective tool for building muscle and for learning how to protect our joints and keep them strong for when you're out in real life and you're actually moving your body weight in space. So including a burpee, including a body weight dip, these are just as important in building functional muscle, muscle that's going to look good and move well for a long time to come, as including things like dumbbell bench or barbell bench. If you think that the only way to progress your muscle building and strength is through adding more weight, then you have not explored body weight training to the full capacity that it is capable of being explored. The final piece that I'm talking about today in this functional muscle format is the opposing muscle group cardio. In the aerobic bodybuilding format, I used rowing as the cardiovascular tool that was opposing the muscle group or the movement pattern that we were training with the bodybuilding exercises. Pushing for the bodybuilding exercises, pulling for the cardiovascular exercises. Another way of thinking about this is rowing is also a very posterior chain dominant cardiovascular exercise, which might tax your glutes and your hamstrings. So you could oppose that with quad focused bodybuilding exercises to get a lower body opposing muscle group cardiovascular aerobic bodybuilding session. Now I don't want to get too complicated about this and I already talked about it earlier in the video, but when we're pulling with the upper body on the rowing machine and pushing with the upper body in the dumbbell bench press and the dip, what we're getting is this synergistic effect of opposing muscle groups that are not necessarily fatiguing each other directly, but they do end up making it a bit harder for each of them to work while you're doing this continuously for anywhere from 12 to 16 minutes. The next time you head to the gym and you're thinking about hitting a chest workout, if you've got access to this equipment, I encourage you to give this workout a try. The full list of the workout is in the description below. You can follow it and you can tell me exactly how it went for you. Comment below if there was a concept here that wasn't quite clear enough for you, or comment below if you have an experience doing this type of training, and if you hit one of our aerobic bodybuilding workouts in the past and you had some success with it. I'm not here to try and reinvent the wheel. I am taking concepts that have been around for a long time and my experience in sport and in bodybuilding, and I'm bringing training formats that I know work, are engaging, are fun, help you look good, and continue to move well for a long time to come. The proof is in the experience. So I encourage you to get in there, try one of these functional bodybuilding formats. And like I said before, make sure you go check out the leg, glute, and back episodes that I did. They are all different training formats, all unique ways of applying functional bodybuilding principles in the gym so that you can look good and move well too. Thank you for your time. I appreciate your attention. I hope you found some value in this video. I will see you next time.